Hello and welcome back everybody to the Absolute Basic Beginner's Guide to Learning Blender Lesson 5 and finally you say let's do some animation first thing we're going to do is just get rid of this nice thing that I've been playing with and then we can start from scratch and create our own we will start where we normally start which is going to be in our default view with our default cube as such so do we need the cube no we don't so let's just grab on the cube delete it by pressing x and enter and the first thing that we're going to add here is some text so we've been working with uh, meshes and objects now in the past now we're going to add some text so under the add button over here look for text and just click on text right now this is just a personal preference for myself you can see that these axis indicators here are not at the center of the text so if i scale i scale from the center of the 3d cursor and for me i like to center everything first so come down to the right here click on this a which is your object data properties for text and come down to paragraph alignment you'll see horizontal here it says left i change that to center and vertical I change that to center so that my text sits in the middle of my 3d cursor and when I start transforming this text I will transform it from the middle so the first thing we want to do is want to rotate this because we want it coming up from bottom left here going up to top right so that's normally easy it's just like any other mesh object we press R for rotate we're going to rotate it on the Z axis so we want to rotate our text along the Z axis and here's a little tip if we're rotating anti-clockwise as such we always enter a positive value if we're rotating clockwise we should be rotating on a negative value so let me show you what I mean I want to rotate this text by 90 degrees and it's going to be an anti-clockwise movement which means I'm going to enter a positive value of 90 degrees. So my shortcuts is going to be R for rotate, Z for the Z axis, and then we're going to press 90 on our keyboard, which takes it anti-clockwise, and enter to confirm the action. Now we've rotated it, and the next thing we need to do is actually change the text. Now just as we toggle between object and edit mode in normal mesh objects, we just use the tab key, to enter the edit mode and you see our cursor is here after our last character we just backspace to get to the beginning now we're going to caps lock this and we're going to type in subscribe and to get back to object mode we just press tab again now we want this to fill our screen so the next thing we're going to do is scale it so just press s we scale it and then G and Y so that we can get it nicely centered in our screen. All right, so that's our subscribe text. It's got no material yet. It's got no animation. And uh, we're just going to create a backdrop or a floor for it. So let's go to add and add a mesh plane. And scale that up right so why can we see the plane and not the text because the plane is above the text so let's move that down by pressing g z and then down with the arrow and enter can we still see it no trust me it's there so go into solid mode and there you can see it is now we need to add some materials let's start with the plane because we're on the plane already find the material object icon here and we're going to choose a new one and we're going to change the base color and like we did last time we're just going to make it nice and dark nice and black nothing happening here why because we're in the wrong view so go back up to rendered view and we've now changed our plane to black or our floor is black all right first thing we do go and name it so black floor Now let's go to our text. We have no material attributed to the text, so let's create a new one. We're going to make a nice base color of lime here. 
All right, so that's our base color. But you see that doesn't really pop, so we want to add some more things to the actual material just to make it pop. So let's scroll down, and we're looking for emission. Emission is basically like something emitting light. At the moment, this box is dark black over here, which means that we're not emitting anything. Click on that and move the slider up to the top here. Now, if we look at our text, it's emitting white, but our base color is green. So let's go down and change our emission color to green as well. All right, so that's looking a bit better. We can change one other thing because we can determine here how strong our emission should be. So just under the emission color, we have emission strength. It's set to one at the moment. Let's go in there and just change it to four. And we can see that everything is much brighter now. So all good there. Okay, now that we've added the material, of course, the first thing we need to go do is change the name. So let's call this emission lime. Now might also be a good time to save our work. So let's control S, choose a folder. We're going to call it sub animate. And as we progress, we're just going to hit control S just to save our work as we go along. Right, so now we have our plane, which is our floor, and we have our text, but we have no movement yet. So down over here, and I think yours might look like this as we start, we have what's called a timeline. So come down to the bottom, just above all these controls here, and just open up this timeline. This is the timeline as you'll see it in the default view. So we've got a starting point over here, and it starts on frame number one, and our end point is at frame number 250. I can change these values in here if I need to, but this is the default opening up view of how Blender will start. So your timeline will always be 250 frames. Each second of animation is made up of 24 frames, which means that this 250 frames here is going to be about just over 10 seconds worth of animation. We're not quite sure yet how much we're going to need, so let's leave it as is. With our text selected, we can see that we've added no information to the timeline yet. The timeline will show the information with regards to animation. So let's go to the start of our timeline because that's where our animation will start. You have to be very specific with Blender with regards to animation about what you want to do with specific objects and how you would like to move it. We know that in the beginning of our scene we don't want to see the word subscribe, so we need to move it out of the way. And we're going to move or do all our animation on the Y axis. So GY and just move it out of the camera view. No matter what we do, that letter or that subscribe word is going to stay there forever until we tell it to move. So the first thing we need to do is tell Blender that at the beginning of our timeline, we want subscribe to be in this particular position. Now to insert a what's called a keyframe, we press I in object mode and we get some options here. So Blender wants to know, yes, I'll insert a keyframe for you. What kind of keyframe would you want? Do you want location, rotation, scale, etc., etc., etc.? We are animating only on location at the moment. So just by moving from one area to another, look under location. The L has been underlined, which means that the shortcut for inserting a keyframe for location is going to be L. So for us to insert a keyframe, just press Y L. Have a look at our timeline on frame one. A little diamond, yellow diamond or gold diamond has appeared over here. That means that we have a keyframe set for this word at frame number one. If we have no other keyframes, this is not going to move. So if we move our timeline to here, for example, and start to play, maybe move this into here, start to play going to jump back always because it's only got one keyframe to work with and it's this one in the beginning that says this is where the text needs to be. 
So let's move this on by one second. And we know one second is 24 frames. So we want to jump from frame 1 plus 24, which is 25. And just enter here 25. Enter. Our timeline sits now on frame number 25. Where do we want our text to be? Well, let's GY it. Bring it into position. That's where we want it to be. And we need to insert a keyframe for location. So again, that's going to be IL. And the keyframe has been inserted. So now we've entered animation keyframes correctly because we always need a starter keyframe and we need a end keyframe. Now if we go to the beginning, our text starts over here where we said it should. We press play. The text will take one second to come into view, and then it's going to stop. And it stops because we've given it no commands, no further information of what to do after this. So let's go back to the beginning. If I want to jump keyframes, I can use this little icon here, which will jump to the following keyframe. We're on keyframe 25. The text is exactly where we want it to be. And we want it to stay stationary there for three seconds. So add 72 onto there. That's 97. So we're going to have it stationary up to frame 97. Now we need a starting point for animation again. So now we're going to enter another keyframe also for location. So IL. Have a look down here. We have this solid gold line which run between frame 25 and frame 97. That's basically telling you that between these two keyframes here, there's absolutely no movement, but that's exactly what we want. It took one second for the text to arrive into our scene, and we're going to use one second for the text to leave our screen. So 97 plus 24, which gives us 121, is going to be our next keyframe. Now we need to first move the text, GY, take it out of the scene. We have to tell Blender to insert a keyframe there, so we press IL. And we have our end keyframe. So we have a start, a stop, a start, and a stop. If we press play, all of these other frames along here are basically invalid, of no use. So we can make our animation a lot shorter. Our last frame is 121, so let's change this 250 to 121. Now your animation is going to play from frame 1 to 121 and will continue to loop so you can check your work. So let's have a look at this. Right, so it's doing everything we wanted it to do. A couple of things to look out for. If you look at the timeline down at the bottom, when my mouse pointer is over the timeline, any action that I request or any shortcut that I use is valid for the timeline only, not for the viewport. If the mouse pointer is over the viewport, any actions that I request or shortcut that I use is valid for the viewport. Let me show you what I mean. If I go down to the timeline over here and press X, it wants to know, do I want to delete keyframes? That's because the mouse pointer is over the timeline. If I have the mouse pointer over the scene and I press X, it wants to know, do I want to delete this object? So it's very important where the mouse pointer is. Go back down to the timeline over here. All of these diamonds are yellow or gold. And that means they've all been selected. If I press G for move, I can move keyframes. If I press G up here, I'm moving the object. If I want to move only one keyframe, I have to click left button on it. Now you can see all of the others have turned into white. If I press G now, I move keyframe only. So why would we want to move just one keyframe? Let's have a look at a quick example. We have between this keyframe on 1 
and keyframe 25, we have one second or 24 frames for this text to come into our scene. Let's say we want that to be a bit faster. So instead of 24 frames, let's halve it and it's going to come in at 12 frames. So select the very first keyframe and what we want to do is we're going to move it by 12 closer to our endpoint, which will make our animation faster. So press G and 12 and that takes the keyframe a lot closer, which means that it's going to be a lot faster. We do the same with the last one, but this time we're going to use the end keyframe. We're going to move it to the left, which is a minus value. So G minus 12. And our animation is going to be a bit faster. As I said earlier, you always need a starting point and an ending point. So now we have a start and an end, and a start and an end. Let's take this guy here, which is our second start, and let's delete this keyframe by pressing X and then Enter. So what do we have now? If we play the animation, we should have a start. The text should stop. And then because there's no new start here, it's going to continue in a slow movement all the way to this point here. Let's have a look at this. And that's because this keyframe is our end for this animation. And it's also become our start for this animation. So yes, we do have a start and a stop for both actions. So how do we get this one back in here again? Well, we know that let's use this jump keyframe to get there. That's the point we want it to stay at. We can go and right click that particular keyframe and copy it. Now we go back to frame 97 and I can right click and paste it. And our gold line is back as well. Now the animation should play perfectly. Comes in stops for three seconds and zooms out again. Don't forget when you're happy with your progress, control S and this will save your work so that you don't have to start over and do it again. All right, so first let's go to our little camera over here and make sure that we are in EV render engine. Otherwise, this is gonna take a very long time to do. And then we go to the next icon down, which is output properties. So our resolution is 1920 by 1080. This is regular video size, so we're going to leave that as is. If we're making a short, then we're going to swap these around. And this will be 1080 by 1920. Now we're creating in a portrait form for YouTube shorts, TikTok, all those kind of things. Let's go back. Make sure we're on 100%. It should be. That's the default. You can see here our frame start is 1, end is 121, that's all good. Our frame rate is 24 frames per second, that's what we need. And the output over here says temp folder, so we need to go and change this. So let's go and hit the folder here. We're going to find out where we're going to put this. So let's just take this folder and press accept. Now that should change. So whatever we're saving and rendering is going to go to that folder over there. Now, just below that, we have a choice of what our format should be. So at the moment, this is under PNG. Now, PNG is an image file. RGBA basically means that if you have any parts of the image that's transparent, it will stay as transparent. Now you have some choices and some options and opinions because a lot of people use this as it is so that every single frame that renders here is going to render as a PNG image and you can put them all together in a video sequence at a later stage. What's the advantage of doing this? Well, if your computer crashes halfway during a render, then you have all the image files up to the crash and then you only have to start the second half of the render without starting all again. Let's have a look at how that works. So we've chosen our output, our output folder, our PNG and Let's hit render and animation and sit back and let Blender do its thing. Oh, 
on my system, that was about 0.3 of a second per frame. That's going to be just under a minute. Let's go to the actual folder that we were using and see if we can find. All right, so as I said, it's got a whole lot of PNG files. In fact, there should be 121. Yep, 121. There's the last one over there. Uh, I just want to show you, for example, each image that's created has been 972 kilobytes. So this is just under a megabyte. There's one that's over a megabyte, which means we've created quite a bit of information there. All right, so let's go ahead and let's just change this and see what our other options are. So if we go to PNG, click on the drop down and change this to FFmpeg video. Once you've done that, go to encoding and change it to MPEG4. It means we're saving now in MP4 files. A little bit further down, output quality, change it to high. So we're not rendering in PNG images anymore. We're going to actually make a video. Of course, the downside to a video is that you cannot have transparent parts of the video, so you would have to use the PNG option if you have transparent parts. The upside is it's going to be a lot smaller, the file. So let's render the animation again. Render, animation, sit back and relax. Render is complete. On my system, that took just a slight bit longer per frame. That's because we changed our output quality to high. Let's go to the folder and find our video. There it is. 00120121. That's a Blender default. So it's called this file according to the frames that we used. Frame 1 to frame 121. Be very careful because if you do a different animation with the same frames, it's going to override this file. This particular file is 927 kilobytes. And let's look at the quality. All right, so all good. So we have a video that's about uh, one megabyte as opposed to having 121 images which is about 121 megabytes. So, if you need transparency, use PNG. Otherwise, stick to the video files. And that is basic animation. So, please folks, give us a like, give us a subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Any issues or problems that you have along the way, I'm more than glad to help you out with answering some questions. Thanks for sticking around. Lesson 6 coming up soon. See you shortly. Bye-bye.